Welcome back to Graphics Tech. Today we're going to do a deep dive into the OLED screens of these new M4 iPad Pros. We're going to compare the nano texture versus the standard glass. We're going to even compare them to some older iPad model screens and to see what are really the improvements and what are the things you can expect out of these new screens. The first thing I really want to compare is all of these screens side by side by side by side at night in this really dark environment and I want to show how they highlight differently. This right here is the M1 iPad Pro on the left and the M4 on the right. You can see how the mini LED and the OLED compare. This is the standard glass versus the nano texture glass OLED and how they compare with each other. Something I want to note is that you don't see a big difference between the nano texture screen, especially when it's dark. And then again, with that mini LED, you don't notice a whole lot, except you can see around the border of that frame for the widescreen cutout, you see that blooming happening all around the border. And even some of the bright moments of the film itself, you see that blooming. And then looking at the M4 versus the 11 inch 2018, the 11 inch 2018 looks atrocious with how the gray black borders are it just they look awful and it, there's just no good comparison there lcd versus oled is just not not it's not even fair oled is just superior in pretty much every way where mini led is much closer to the performance of oled but oled is still better these screens in the middle you can just see they are better than the competition better than everything around them they look far, far superior. And I really like that the nano texture option does not seem to be lowering the quality at all between it and the standard glass. They seem to be very, very similar quality and there's no like grayness to the screen, especially when the lights are off and it's dark. Moving to some nano texture only footage here. I wanted to show how in this car ride I took with some of my friends, you can really see how even with that sunlight pouring right in through the window, and it, it does still cause some minor reflection and some bright spots on the display, but overall, it is way, way better than any other iPad screen I have dared to use in this much sunlight. Like I'm actually able to pull out the pencil here and draw a little bit on freeform. I don't really know what I'm drawing here, but it's a bit nonsense, but it's still really neat. And using that Apple Pencil Pro with its neat features here, it is really, really cool. Uh, this wasn't really anything in particular that I was doing, it was more of a test, but I really, really enjoyed being able to view some stuff. I was actually able to look up some stuff and do some real work on this iPad during this bright sunny day in a car. And I never really felt like it's been easy to do that before. This is really handy and this does kind of show the bigger benefit of the nano texture screen. And I really, really like that. After the car ride, I noticed while doing one of my daily devotions that I was able to keep it in dark mode, which is really cool because normally the light would be too much of a glare on my screen. And I could never do that before using this nano texture screen. So that's a really nice option to have. So this first test that I'm showing right here is the M1 iPad Pro. This is how it is acting in Pretty direct sunlight. To be honest, it's not quite as bright and shiny as I was hoping. It got a little overcast as soon as I got out there, but it does have a really good amount of sunlight that's hitting it. And you can definitely see, especially at certain points when the light's hitting it a lot, it's like a mirror. And you can even see me recording in it. You can see all the trees above me. It's very, very hyper reflective. Uh, and even when you bring it kind of close, it's a little bit better, but it's still very reflective. This screen is only getting to about 600 nits because it only does the 1000 nits and 600 in HDR content for the for the mini LED. During regular use, even outdoor use, it does not get that high. So 
this is going to look worse in this kind of lighting and that's just kind of how it's gonna be uh, but i do think overall this is looking decent so as you can see looking at it anything with a black background with only small highlights is virtually impossible so if you like to work in dark mode a lot you like to take notes in dark mode a lot it's going to be a lot harder outside with this m1 ipad pro and that's just going to be how it is like it definitely could be worse i wish apple would allow the thousand nits brightness on the mini led during daylight as well i feel like that's worth it but maybe it was just too much of a toll on the battery or something this is the M4 iPad Pro with the standard glass. And as you can see, the reflections are relatively similar. It is still going to reflect sunlight and light around it very easily. That's not gonna really change even with this newer device, but the brightness gets up to a thousand nits. It is better. It's not hugely significant, but it is better and that is completely fair to say that this is much more usable in sunlight and there's a lot less times where I am completely blinded by the reflections. Now again, if you're going to use more like dark mode or dark screen kind of content, like here's a black note page, uh, it's going to be very, very hard to see what you're doing, even with this newer one, because obviously even with black screens, they don't really have light because the pixels are actually off. So it's going to be all up to the coating on this display. And this coating is not that much better. So with the lights on and full brightness, it is more usable. But with the darker and dark mode display and dark mode notes, all those kind of things, they're going to be just as hard to use in direct sunlight, which I mean, makes sense for most people. That's pretty typical. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. That's just how it is for this one. So now we get to the nano texture display and we see how this thing handles sunlight. And I think honestly, when I had the nano texture out there, it was probably the brightest time period that I had any of them out there. So this is really pushing it. And you saw how much like trees and other things, oh, you can see a cat there. Uh, you saw like how much trees and other things uh, that was reflecting in his other displays. And yeah, there's some light shining a little bit on that, but it is reflecting a lot of that stuff. It is keeping them way away from the screen like you're not seeing trees in or even me reflected back on the display that is completely different than the other ones this is a huge improvement and it can even handle things that are much darker and actually make them usable and viewable which we'll see in a second here see as as I'm writing in the dark mode notes, I can actually see what I'm doing versus both of the other two screens. You could not see what you were doing. I, again, there's still some reflections or some particles that you can see on the screen, but I can do it. I can read it. If I actually wrote words, you could have actually read them on the screen. And that's pretty stinking awesome. So that's the differences between these two different kinds of screens. Yes, the nano texture definitely helps in sunlight. Although just the new brighter screens also improve the sunlight performance. So the nano texture is not a must have. And especially if you're not gonna get one terabyte, I don't really think you should stress about getting the nano texture and like spending way more money just to get that screen. But if you are going for one terabyte or two terabytes, I think you should consider the nano texture screen. It is still a really, really good option, and it does have a lot of benefits. Again, durability is still a somewhat of a concern to me because I don't know how well it's going to hold up over time, but I will keep making follow-up reviews, so if you want to just hold off on purchasing, I will kind of let you know as time goes on how the screen is handling. But right now, it's doing great, and it feels nice, and it feels better to write on even than the standard glass. It's not like it's made for the Apple Pencil, but it definitely feels better with it than the regular glass. And honestly, I do just think there's a lot of improvements that it makes to the iPad experience. I mean, Mini LED was really good, especially for that time, but 
the OLED, the Tandem OLED, it's just so good. I will never prefer mini LED. I think the Tandem OLED technology is far superior and I really think they executed it very well on these new iPad Pros. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other things you want me to review on these iPad Pros or anything else I should look at or do, please let me know down in the comments below. Or if you think I missed something in this comparison, let me know that as well. I can make follow-up videos. I can do more testing in different areas. I'm gonna keep having these iPads. So anything else you wanna see from them, just let me know. I will make an entire video just dedicated to that. I've been looking forward to WWDC to see what Apple will bring to the iPads with iPad OS 18. I'm really excited. I hope they do a lot of amazing things with iPad OS. Also, never buy technology because you think in the future it might become what you want. If you're gonna buy the iPad Pros today, you should buy them for how they are right now. And if how they are right now is not good enough for you, then don't buy them. Personally, for what I do though, I can replace a laptop in my workflow with an iPad Pro. I do have a Mac Studio, but I honestly have only been using it to help me organize my cameras and record footage. I have not even edited on the Mac Studio in over a week. I've been doing all my editing on the iPad Pro and it's kind of more fun for me that way. And the ability to just take it wherever and just edit on the couch with the Apple Pencil, it's just way more flexible and I like that. So for me, the iPad Pro works as this laptop replacement. It's not gonna for everybody though. So hopefully my videos show the use cases where it does work and where it doesn't and that way you can make an informed and good decision for yourself. If you're curious about any of the equipment I use, it's always gonna be linked below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.